over quite simply this input, loudspeaker. Um, he wanted to compare, he made a system for comparing what goes into the amplifier. We call that A. And then he took this sample of what came out of the amplifier, which would be A, that plus the distortion that is created, everything that is added. Then we, he wanted to compare the two, or compare these two and subtract what is here from that. What you would be left with was only the distortion. If you take that minus that, you're left with only the distortion. And then you can do the same thing as they do with noise cancelling headphones. And in noise cancelling headphones, there is a microphone that record what you hear, or the sound outside, and then they play <coughs> that back and switch plus and minus, and you hear nothing. You can do that with a speaker. You could turn them to face one another, switch plus and minus on one, the sound will almost be gone. And he wanted to do the same thing with distortion and play back a signal live that was minus D. So you have an input which is this music signal, then it comes out music signal plus distortion, then you subtract the distortion and play that back real time, and you're left with only A, theoretically, going out to the speakers. Of course, nothing works perfectly. If uh, something were absolutely perfect, we would be millionaires and we would be the only amplifier designer in the world. But it does work really well. And this phone company invested $3 million to, uh, to uh, develop the technology and make it into a patent that they want to license to Harman and JBL and Mark Levinson and Krell and all the big companies at the time, uh, and nobody bought it. So it was a massive failure. And in 1995-96, in we started to make samples. I wasn't involved in the company yet. We started to make samples. You know, how could you actually use it? So we made some amplifiers that we didn't sell much of, um, but they are still the foundation for much of the Halo products today. But they were made just to show how it could be done. Then in 2000, the big phone company, Telenor, found out the dot-com bubble has burst. Nobody wants to own technology companies anymore. They sold out. We were able, or our founder was able to buy the company and the patents back for almost nothing. Because without the investor, it wasn't worth anything. And then he just started to put it in his own products and make a few amplifiers, then a few more, and then sell a few more, and just put the money back into the business. With a piece of technology that both have extremely low distortion. So when we listen to music, even when we listen to our smallest uh, H80 amplifier, has this patented technology inside, you can still hear instruments and music very naturally. It's our claim. This is marketing. This is not marketing. That's just amplifier ABC. But marketing, we think you can hear a guitar. It will stand here and play to you. It will not sit back here and it will not scream to your ears. Very low distortion and very high damping factor. So it's extremely good bass control. Because this patent makes certain that you can both have the very stable amplifier and the very low distortion at the same time. And nobody in the world has anything like this. Uh, but the damping factor of Hegel amplifiers is from between 1,000 to 4,000. Typical new amplifier between 80 to 100, perhaps 60 to 100. Um, it's just a number, but it means 
better dynamics, better base. And that's the core of everything here. So I'll play a song um, on my computer. This is called O Holy Night in uh, English and O Helgamat in Norwegian. This little H80, which is the entry level Hegel amplifier, uh, is really good. When we launched it, it was actually the best uh, integrated amplifier we had in many senses. Uh, which was uh, a bit sad, because it was also the least expensive uh, amplifier we had. And it was better than many of the big ones. And that told us that we had work to do, uh, because we had started to learn a few things when we designed that HAT amplifier. This sound engine technology oh, had been designed 15 years ago, finished 15 years ago. And in those 15 years, we had learned quite a few things about what we could do. And we decided, decided to make a new version of it. And that new version called Sound Engine 2, it's the same principle. It's just that new components allowed us to make it faster and to make it more precise in many ways. So basically, the new Sound Engine 2 has even lower distortion. It's difficult to quantify how much lower. Uh, and even higher damping factor, so it's even more stable. <coughs> the new Sound Engine can give us from 2,000 <coughs> to 4,000, while the old one could do 1,000. But what is most audible in the beginning is typically the the damping factor, no, the, the distortion. Uh, we made it first for the reference integrated amplifier we have today, called the H360. And um, that was a great success. And then we learned a few other things, um, but it was has to do with digital technology. And we made a smaller version of the H360. It came out last fall, and it's called the Rust, it's here. Um, and to take all technology and features away, sound-wise, even though it's exactly the same platform, it's exactly the same size, if you lift the lid off, they look almost identical, these two amplifiers. Uh, the sound difference is quite big. I'll compare the two, and this is Donald Fagan. Does anybody know Donald Fagan? Yes. Très bon. Here comes Donald Fagan. <laughs> <laughs> 